know. So, welcome back to the Beans Does Stuff podcast. And as I said in the intro there, I'm joined by my buddies Gaz and Andy. So, if one of you wants to say hello and introduce yourself, probably go with Andy first. Tell us what beer you're drinking. Hi, I'm Andy. I'm drinking Henry Weston's Medium Dry Vintage Cider. 8.2. It's an eight, yeah, 8.2, just to loosen the lips. <laughs> Gazza? Um, hi, guys. Um, I'm Gaz. Um, I'm drinking something not quite as exotic, just the standard bud. Um, king of beers, as they say. Um, <laughs> I've, well, I've got my Titanic Brewery keg, Plum Porter. Good choice. Wait, it's, it's not. It's a hot day. Porter is a hot one. So, we're going to be talking about our experiences of the UK games of the NFL. Now, we've been to quite a few of those, haven't we? How many games have we been to in total? It was about five or six? I think, five, yeah, five or six, I think, in total now. Yeah. And he's joined us for the last two or three, was it? Uh, yeah. Three times, but we saw two games, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, did. we we didn't get tickets to the last one, which actually brings me on to the first topic that I had noted down. My pet peeve, Ticketmaster. Yeah. I've got massive issues with Ticketmaster. Not just not because of NFL UK. I also booked to see um, PBR bull riding in Vegas. And it, was, it's, it advertised itself as three days of music and bull riding. So I booked for... Final day, that's going to be the best one, isn't it? That's going to be the best one to go to. It's going to have all the finals. We turned up and there was no bull riding. Said so no, the finals were yesterday. It's just music. It's like, oh, that's... all right, fair enough. I tried to get my money back off, off them, but they wouldn't give me any, wouldn't give me a penny back. But well, go I was going to say, the, the problem you've got is they, they sort of advertise the time and they advertise what, they, what yeah. the event is and then they don't sort of back that up. And there's like issues with actually what they're stating is on sale and actually sometimes that actually isn't the case but our issues with them for the nfl and it's not just us who had these is it let's be honest you no. see on social media massive complaints about it trying to get hold you guys have tried as well i've tried yeah. last time out which when was that 2000 <clears throat> did we um we, but we went down in 2018 didn't get tickets to the game hope to pick some up while we're down there didn't manage to do that but we couldn't get them. We, how, how long were we online for? It was ridiculous. Well, we had, was it, Andy, was it, you said you had, was it a couple of different laptops? One was the island site as well. And literally there was like three of us on <laughs> at designated time, all trying. And it yeah. just kept saying, like, no, not happening. We were trying the, um, like, priority tickets and all sorts, weren't we? Yeah. I suppose it shows how popular it is, but also um, it does. How, we, how we allocate stuff as well, I guess. But, but when those tickets are available on StubHub five minutes after they've gone on sale, yeah. which is the partner group of Ticketmaster, at five times the price. I mean, yeah. I, I love I love the NFL, but I wouldn't I wouldn't go and uh, I wouldn't go and pay those prices to get in because it's an expensive enough weekend anyway. While you're down there, yeah. No, I mean, I mean that was one of the things that we said, wasn't it? Is that what, shall we go down there and if we happen to come across some tickets and we can try and stumble across some, we would. But I mean, the ticket the, the price they were going for when you're down there at the venues are are ridiculous. Yeah. Was, 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 was that a pop at me that I stumbled across? <laughs> no, no, we'll get on to that. No, not yet. <laughs> we'll get on to that a bit later. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we, we didn't manage to get tickets the last time out, but the, the previous, the previous, well, the first times we went, it was really easy, wasn't it? The first yeah. game we went to was uh, Bears versus the Buccaneers. Yeah, uh, which and is, the better, is my team as well, which was so as an experience that was that was like first class. First time we're going to go down there, we actually didn't have any trouble with the tickets. I I think I logged on at maybe so quarter to ten, ten to ten in the morning, and it and it came up. So tickets available at ten o'clock, and at straight in, so straight in. So how many tickets you on? What tier of tickets? Um, booked them pretty much by sort of five past ten, past ten. Just fired Adam off a text and stuff, and said, "Yeah, we're going. Happy days." Happy days indeed. And then we went, we missed, we skipped a year, and then it was the Steelers Vikings, which we got to see. It was obviously Steelers, yeah. my, my team. So, so what's that? Amongst our three teams, you got the Bears, the Lions, and the, and the Steelers. We've seen all of those. Uh, seven Lombardi trophies we've seen there. Yeah. 
Is it six yeah. for the Steelers? Is it? Is it six? For six how many? For the how many? No, is it five? Of you guys have had or six? Is oh, it six. Oh, is it six? Is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll we, I, I, I would say we're making a comeback, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm honest. Come, come back to propping up the the, the uh, <laughs> NFC North. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we, uh, we got a ticket. We got tickets to the Steelers Vikings just as easily, didn't we? Yeah, no, no problem. Like, so the first, the first couple of years, whether or not that's because perhaps the the popularity of the NFL in Europe has grown, and perhaps the demand for the tickets has got more and more, so they have to be slightly more selective. I don't know if that's something to do with it. But the first couple of years, literally, like, no, no problem. Just straight on log on. How many do you want? Where do you want to sit? So, what price bracket? Yeah, credit card details in. You go done. No bother. Uh, and obviously, the games this year have been cancelled. So another another opportunity missed, which is is disappointing. Um, those games are all going to be played in the in the US. Um, did they ever announce? I know I know they sort of said which teams they were, but did they ever announce which games? Were, I don't think they announced did they, which no. games were going to be played. No, no. The Jags were doing back to back home games, weren't they? And I know we've got them in November. Steelers Jags at well at Jacksonville now I'm sure it is so you never know the Steelers could have been coming back and we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll never was, there, there was rumours was it the, was it the Packers as well was it rumours because were they the are they the, the only team not to have come over or something are they or I think they might be now this it might be one or two others but it might be one but certainly Packers I don't think have been over and there was talk about them coming over so without knowing their schedule obviously off the top of my head I, I couldn't sort of say which which game it would be but I, I'm, I'm almost certain they said that they would be one of them. And massive support for them in the UK as well. You, you, when you go down there, you see jerseys from every team, and you oh, yeah. see a load. Of, you see a load of sort of Rogers jerseys while you're down there as well, don't you? Yeah. And loads of people with the cheese heads on. Yeah, I generally try not to shout too much. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, being divisional rivals and all that. But... <laughs> so I, I read something online as well about the Steelers. <clears throat> The not playing in front of a crowd, which potentially they won't do, is going to cost them somewhere around about one hundred and fifty-seven million dollars this really? year. That's yeah, that's that's quite scary. But yeah, they are still talking about playing in front of a crowd in the US. Um, I understand why the games are cancelled. I don't know if I'd feel comfortable going to one anyway, even if they were being played. I don't know what you think. No, I. I... <sighs> I mean, I think the way with the way sort of the guidance is, I think it'll be a while before we get any sort of participation, sort of you know, sort of spectators going on. I mean, I know they're on about sort of obviously in the, in 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 England, sort of the return of football or soccer, as the Americans call it. Um, but obviously, that's behind closed doors, isn't it? So there's no fans. No. And I, well, and those are all being shown on TV, though, aren't they? Every game on TV. Am I right in saying? I think that? I think so. Yeah. Think some sort of deal with terrestrial TV as well, or something. Yeah, I think all the year, um, I think they're going to show every game they can um, yeah, yeah. when it does come back up. And they're also on about um, simulating the crowd sounds as well. <laughs> That's all we're going to do. Yeah, I've been watching the Bundesliga and it's like, it's just empty. It's so weird. It's You can hear them just shouting to each other. It's like a you know, like a Sunday league thing. Yeah. Like all of the sounds and stuff. Properly. I, I remember watching, the, there, was, there was an England game similar, I can't remember where they played it, it was somewhere, it must be European qualifier, um, and there'd been someone rest and some troubles, and they played it behind closed doors, um, and you could literally hear the players, like, shouting to each other, like, man on, and now, and all that sort of thing, and you just never normally hear that, um, and it was a bit, it was a bit spooky, you know, you score a goal, and it, you literally could hear the proverbial sort of penny drop, it was, like, ridiculous. So they, did, they did it at Arsenal as well when we were at Highbury. They, uh, when they were revamping one of the stands, I think it might have been the North Bank, uh, they put a fake crowd in and then pumped the noise from the other three from the other three sides into that. That's when Wright and all that were playing back in there. <laughs> well, to be fair, I'm surprised they got some crowd noise from Arsenal. <laughs> Highbury, Highbury and all that, you know what I mean? It's a bit like... <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sure there's a Man C joke in here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. It's, it's better than an Arsenal joke, let's be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so next, so 2021, uh, you know, assuming pandemic-wise everything's a little bit more back to normal, I assume we're going to be getting tickets to that. Yeah, regardless of the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I think one of the things that we look for is a or one of our teams playing. That that would be the first that that would be the first criteria. Then I think we look for if it's none of our teams, is there a divisional rival from one yeah. of our teams? Because basically, you just go down there and support the other team. Um, 
And then I think we probably look at the actual matchups, like actually which one probably looks the best game on paper, don't we? Yeah. Um, and those are the toughest ones to get tickets to, aren't they, in the past? Yeah. Found that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I'm up for. I, I'm, I'm up for going as, as as many as you can. Yeah. So also we mentioned then the cost of the tickets on StubHub. Cost of the tickets. Now we've never been to White Hart Lane. No, it's not White Hart Lane anymore, and it's the other shed they built, um, and just next to it. And we've never been to Twickenham, have we? We've never been to no. the Twicker Bowl. So we've only ever done the Wembley games, and the tickets there. I don't think, given the seats that we've had, we're in. We we you know we paid was it a hundred odd? Was it hundred and twenty quid each a ticket last time? Yeah, and last time I think the first I think the first year was was it. I'm sure it's about 60 or 70 quid the first year that we went. Um, we, were up had, in, we were up in the rafters we were up, a bit then. We? Yeah, we were, we were up at another tier. In fact, we were, was, out, we were outside a t shirt grabbing race for the t shirt. <laughs> we, we were. <laughs> but there, was, there, there were those guys that. Was that year one where. Was it a German team or something? There was like absolute <laughs> meatheads <laughs> that sat in front of us. They were massive. <laughs> but like a whole team. So the Steelers game because there was that guy who came in with his girlfriend and they just. And to be fair, she was quite quite nice looking, wasn't she? And these German guys were just giving this. He left before the end of the game. Yeah. A lot of it. Before. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> was that was that the, was that year two? Then was that the Steelers game? That... Yes, it was the Steelers Vikings. Was it? Which, right. which we, we weren't successful. In. We left early, didn't we? So to make sure we got. Well, we didn't leave early because we got right down to the end. Uh, and if if Big Ben had uh, fired off a touchdown, we'd have gone into uh, into extra time. And you were saying, no, 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 we'll miss our train back. I was like, it's fine. Yeah, later, yeah. I'd sleep rough, it's not a problem. And then obviously he fumbled it um, and the game ended. And then we got on the train and that had been cancelled, and it? it was sat there for ages. Because yeah. it was some, then they said something hurt on the line or something. Was it probably that was? guy? Probably that guy did upset about his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> probably was. But no, but in the first, the first year, it was, I'm sure it was 60, 70 quid. And then this last year was, was it about 120 quid, 130 quid, something like that? Yeah, but we were close to grabbing a t shirt. Yeah, oh, we were definitely one, one, of those, one of those medium t shirts would be a crop top on. <laughs> <laughs> that that would definitely be a goal, though, when we go down next year. We have to get within t shirt range because I think we're, what were we, about two rows too far back? It didn't, we weren't quite there, were we? But Not quite. I, I, I did lean and try and grab. Um, but... Yeah, well, you've got to try, <laughs> trying to lean and grab things, haven't you? When we get <laughs> about that later. So yeah, so price wise, I don't, I, you know, I don't think that's too bad for you know. Bear in mind that's our national stadium watching, and it is a spectacle. You get to see a little bit of music as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that... Sorry, go on. Yeah, I was just gonna say, uh, it's an interesting uh, pre-game sort of music choice in it. Sometimes was it? I think was it Sugs? I think my first one, <laughs> yeah. and then. Yeah. Was it Robin? Robin Thick. Yeah, Robin Thick. <laughs> yeah. Have we seen Jess Glenn there as well? Uh, was it Jess Glenn? Who was the great? So the first year, we, they didn't. Did they do music at the start of the game? All I remember is the music in Trafalgar Square, but I don't remember who it was. Well, that's that's the other thing. One of the best parts about it, isn't it? Like the um, like the parties the day before the um, what do you call them? What are they called? Fan rallies. Yeah. yeah. Fan rounds, that's it. So, the last a couple of those haven't happened, have they, on the Saturday before? And I know it's sort of seen if we can get a franchise in London mm. and, and it'll be a regular game, which obviously they don't have that, that fan rally the day before a game mm. in the States. But I still think that's an opportunity missed because they're good drinking days, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it basically influenced us in terms of when we go down. Because obviously the, the game is is generally on the Sunday, or the games that we you know we watch are on the Sunday. But we we historically just always travel down on the Saturday because we know that's going to be the fan rally. And obviously it's been in various places. So you've had Trafalgar Square, and then you've had was it um, Regent Street, uh, at Regent Street, and you've had it at Wembley Stadium as well. Um, yeah. But that always seems as though that was sort of one of the reasons why we, we'd go down. You'd, you'd go to the fan rally, you'd have a few beers, and then you're down in London. And basically, the night is yours then, and and then obviously you've got the game on the Sunday, isn't it? So that you know, it's it's a good opportunity to, I think, to attract a lot of people there. Um, oh, sure. I mean, to be fair, they changed it though, didn't they? Because the first year when we went, you actually needed a ticket for the game to get into the fan rally. So the, what, the yeah. first one, the first one that was in Trafalgar Square, um, you needed a ticket in. So they actually, it was gated, and the security guards, and you actually had to show your game ticket. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And um, 
Regent Street, I don't suppose you could, you could do that down there. No, uh, we wondered whether or not you could do that, didn't we? But Trafalgar Square, we said, we thought it was the best one. Still the best one. Because they had beer tents. So you had, you had your good guys in tents. So it's like five, five pounds for a pint of beer. It was, it was like, yeah, but I think if you bought four, it's like, was it 16 quid? It's like 16 quid for four pints of beer. It was like, like Christmas, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm only pretty nailed at Christmas as well. <laughs> but, but interestingly enough, I, whether or not it was just because of it's new, but I still think that, that was the best fan rally that we've been to, the one in Trafalgar Square. I think so. I think so. Um, it, it seemed to be a bit more contained. Um, and you've got, obviously, your proper fans and pretty much everybody that was there were NFL fans. Nothing against the ones of the Regent Street and stuff, but you would just get normal members of the public. There's a lot of people walking around looking confused. Aren't you? Yeah, like, what's going on? Um, that was just... I was after a few beers, but... Um, but no, the, the first one was the first one was, was. I think we were confused with the prices that that pub we went in. It was Peroni. <laughs> you got, you asked for two pints of Peroni, you got fifteen quid out, on, and then had to root around for more money. It yeah, he like, said. Yeah. So what, what did he say? So it was like. <laughs> Boys, we, you know, we. That was on, that was on Regent Street. Was that where you met the? That was, was that the same pub where you got the? Was it the Vikings head head honcho, yeah. whatever his name? Was that the same yeah. one? Yeah, if you've ever if you've ever seen the uh, the Vikings play, there's a guy who is he literally dressed as a Viking. He's got he's, he's built like a brick privy. He's got the big uh, NFL tattoo on his forehead. I was walking back from the bar. I heard this dude, Roethlisberger sucks. I turned around. This guy's like, yeah, you can say that. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, it's quite funny, but so we walked into there and just stumbled across what was obviously the Vikings pub, and he was around there and stuff. Obviously. Ads walking around with his bloody Steelers top on, which is mint. Um, so we went into the pub and it was like, two pints of prony, please. I was, All right, okay, sound. Uh, right, that's like £15.80 or something. I was like, Ad, we probably will drink this and then find somewhere else. Yeah, yeah we didn't know. <laughs> no, we didn't know. Just, we just nicked a glass every time because thought, if I'm paying that, I'm having a glass. As well. Yeah, it's like ridiculous. I mean, I'm surprised. <laughs> Blimey. It's horrendous. Then we moved on to the Desperados, didn't we? But yeah, so then we did, when we went with Sid, it was uh, Sid, uh, for those listening, his uh, younger brother, uh, who joined us for one of the games. That was the Jags versus the Lions. Yeah. No, Jags versus Cowboys, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he enjoyed it. He's, he's obviously, he's not, a, he's not as big an NFL fan as us three, but... He, he enjoyed it. I mean, he, he watched it. He sort of understood the game enough to know what was going on when he was watching it and stuff. But I think he came down more because, well, me and you had said that we had that actually it's a good crack, it's a good weekend. You know, it's it's lads out in London. You get a chance to watch a decent sporting event, but have a few beers as well. You know, so that, I, think, I think that's probably why he, he sort of jumped on board. And then the next year, it was Alliance Chiefs, which is Andy's first one, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and then the last one was Colts Jags, which I remember was actually quite a good game. It's quite a high-scoring game that one. Was yeah. that the first Jags one in in London? Or am I just making that up? I th- um, no, the Jags won it. I think did they? Yeah, I can't remember. No, I can't remember. It's a bit hazy. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, yeah, it was hazy, <laughs> hazy at best. So the other thing then that's probably worth mentioning is hotels because if you're gonna, I think it's worth if you're gonna go down, going down on the Saturday, having a few beers, sleep them off Saturday night, and we come home on the Sunday night because like yeah. guys normally has to work on the Monday, Andy normally has to work on the Monday. I book the day off because I know I'm a lightweight. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Andy, do you want to tell us about the hotel you bought last time? You saw it as a, out central. <laughs> well, you have a, a five star rating, uh, and this is probably was it was it too close to most of the owners? <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, I think originally I did have the um, one as like a studio apartment or something like that. Did I put that first? Yeah, and then we went to a different day. I think it was so. I found this other one dirt cheap. I thought, oh, that'll do. We were there for like a few hours. <laughs> I'm glad we were there for a few hours. I my health would have taken it any longer if I'm honest. <laughs> well, you guys are all right. I was like fourth floor up. The shower's like in the basement. Dude, dude. I didn't have a toilet in my room. We're, we're in all right at all. 
<laughs> no, I was the only one with the toilet in the room. Yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> no, I know you. You guys had to walk down flights of stairs to the toilet. I barely got a sink. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get a... to, to be fair, though, it, it was cheap. And we're it there for about well, you're five hours. It's expensive. <laughs> It, it was cheap. It was a bit cheaper when the owner then said the day later, oh, by the way, you get a reduction if you pay cash. It's like, all right, okay. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> I, I understand now, right, okay. But it was like, you don't lock your door as well. I know, I didn't know for its day two. But, uh, <laughs> the, uh, it was reminiscent of the hostel. If you ever seen the film The Hostel, I was, I was glad to wake up with my liver and spleen. Oh, I, I was literally just about to say, if you've watched that film and those, it, it reminded you of that. It was the thing is, we walked down the road, and from the outside, it looked absolutely mint. It looked really nice. Well, it's like, what is it? Five minutes away from like Regent Street or Oxford Road, on it. So, location-wise, it's like, oh, this is brilliant. This is oh no, it's like, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> as soon as that door opened, though, it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the faint aroma of dead people was like, oh, it's <laughs> freshly dead people as well. Yeah. <laughs> he turned around and said, Andy, what have you brought us to here? It's like, it's all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, okay. In, in previous times, we've normally gone with like a Premier Inn, haven't we, or something like that? Yeah, so Premier Inn or it was like a holiday. I think, was it your first year, Andy, did we do it? was it like a Holiday Inn sort of express or a Holiday Inn sort of thing? Oh. Um, yeah, it's, it's slightly better than the one that... Uh... Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, didn't, you didn't have to disappear a corpse from the room before you could sleep in. Hey, at least we had their own rooms. Uh. Right. That is true, yeah. Gaz yeah. Was joint rooms. In fact, listen, the second time we went down there for the Steelers-Vikings game, we turned up and he booked a room and it was with a double bed. Just me and him. I don't know if he slept the woman on a reception at 20 just to make sure that he could only have that room. She, there's no more room. Just like, well, I'm sleeping on a couch. I don't care. Yeah. It was a big spoon. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was, was it your first year again that did I book two rooms and then I, I took I took privilege of the single room because, or did I have a double room and you had a twin or something? Because I said yeah. I'd booked it, so I'm having the single room, and you guys can yeah. just, you know, all yeah. you like sort of thing. Um, and then, as I say, it was then Andy then started looking at, oh, well, maybe get like a studio or or whatever, haven't we? So, yeah, because there's one there. next year, though. Yeah, if it, if it does work out cheaper, but you might have yeah. to let me know where it is in advance, Andy, just so we can check it out. Yeah. It's a Google area as well. <laughs> It'd be in my yeah, camper van. A couple of tasty places there, aren't we? <laughs> See, that's a good point. You got my camper van, dude. Take that next time. That's even cheaper. Dude, that's better. That's better than hotel. Take that. And then the other one you put when we went down with Sid, you put one which literally was like drug dealer central, wasn't it? Oh, that was bad, wasn't it? Well, no, the actual place was nice, but getting to it was horrendous. <laughs> yeah, it was terrific. The, the hotel itself was all right, but the second you walked out the door, your hands was on your wallet and your, yeah. and your phone, just to be sure. Yeah. You weren't risking it. We 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 we've sort of the first year actually we stayed in the Premier was it right next to Wembley Stadium didn't we? Over yeah we had a view of the, the stadium from the room. Um, and and actually in hindsight because we thought that might be a bit of a problem just because. Well, getting out was a bit of getting out was a bit of a mare. Um, but actually on reflection in hindsight in pre you know over the last couple of years we always sort of from Wembley you then have to then get on a tube or you then have to get on a you know, to, to then get back to your hotel or to get back to Houston or wherever you're travelling from. So, and actually, the time that we spent in the car the first year, because I drove, didn't I, the first couple of years, um, and actually, when you think about it, once you got through that initial crush of sort of people coming out of Wembley and basically got outside of the sort of Wembley Park perimeter, it was pretty straightforward, really. Um, I think, the re I mean, I think we, we decided train actually is easier, isn't it? It, yeah. it, and it means you can have a couple of beers on the Sunday as well. You don't have to worry about driving and stuff. So, um, but I think that Wembley Park one was actually, I was actually decent. I was oh, okay. um, but okay. we have stayed in, we, we have stayed in a couple of the hotels have been okay, but a couple of, sort of dodgy areas. Well, you, you bought one though, didn't you? Unless you're like, honestly, this is mint. This one it is. It's not quite Wembley Park, but it's really close. I've checked geographically. It's the next nearest Premier into it. But it was like you had to go out to Zone Five back in. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was a sweet, yeah. sweet talk. We, 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 we,
did we, we sweet talk the, the the ticket guy like dude seriously all we're gonna do is like get off the platform walk up go across the platform then walk down and it's like basically you're gonna charge like because we've gone outside the zone or something it is literally like one stop or something yeah uh, and it was the year was that the year we had to get the bus as well because it was it did, oh, there was no yeah. direct link and that was Sid and his confusion with oyster cards <laughs> that was, yeah that, that was where were we I think we actually probably stayed a bit further out of London there, did we? Oh, well, towards maybe outskirts, outskirts of, sort of zone four, maybe. Yeah. Um, and then to travel into the centre of London and have some beers and stuff for the fan rally, we obviously needed a couple of buses, and that was where Sid did his infamous sort of put it up, sort of trying to tap his sort of card against a, a, the, the poster on the window. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Use the machine, not the poster. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> <laughs> yeah, so instead of putting his card actually on the machine, he put it up to the, the actual sticker on the window. Um, at which point, just the, saying, what the hell is Oyster? <laughs> at which point, the, the, the bus driver sort of um, now muttered the immortal words of, don't do Oyster, mate. That is like, what? <laughs> what? 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 what, 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 what um, but I think that was probably because I'm pretty sure that we, we'd gone to the hotel and we dumped our stuff and then we were sort of trying to travel. We we're trying to travel back into London, maybe, um, yeah. just to go and have a couple of beers. But I remember, <laughs> did we did we get off and run? Did we run for a bus or did we capture? I, the yeah, bus we we're going to get I, on or something. I, I gave some wrong information. I said this is our stop, and it wasn't. It was about a mile and a half oh, where we needed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, adding adding his as his factful information. Yeah. <laughs> Which, to be fair, is not the longest walk we've had. To be, you it, know. it isn't the long. No, it, it isn't the longest walk we've had. To be fair, if we the, got off the bus and turned left, it probably yeah. would be the shortest walks we've had. But we didn't. We got off the bus yeah. and turned right. I was we, thinking more of the first time that we went when we fell asleep on the night bus home. Yeah, that. Yeah, that wasn't great. Um, up in Har- <laughs> was it? Was it Harrow or somewhere? Ha- Hackney, Harrow or somewhere? Har- but, so, we, so we said. We said to the because I'm terrible on public transport, so I literally like. Five minutes on public transport, full sleep, and uh, and I, I was like, oh, I'll stay awake, and obviously he didn't. And the guy, the bus guy, was like, Oh, you're going to have to get off now, lads. And we were like, All oh, right, sound, no problem, cheers. Oh, me and Wembley. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, No, dude, you've got to get off. And we were like, Right, okay. And we got off the bus, not knowing really where we were, and just for some reason turned right. Didn't really know where we were, and then just carried on walking, didn't we? Yeah, because that's what we do every time we go. We get out of the bus, start walking, and then about oh, ten minutes later, we start. Actually, is this the way we're supposed to yeah. be going? Instead of possibly <laughs> things, and and then an hour later, we were sort of still walking. At which point, we sort of saw signs for like Harrow on the hill and stuff, which is miles away. And I was like, oh, I'm sure this is wrong. We're like, we're in the wrong place here. Man. I'm sure we're all going the wrong way. Um, and then after about an hour and twenty minutes of walking. We actually finally decided we were going the wrong way and, to, and we proceeded to then walk basically an hour and 20 minutes back the same way that we did. It's pretty, pretty much light, wasn't it, by the time we got back to the hotel. Was, was that your fame? Was that the year that you did your famous walk across the street and asked those, let's just say, lads? Yeah, half past <laughs> three. It was. There, was, there, was, there was two, maybe three questionable looking individuals stood next to a trestle table at half three in the morning outside a pub. I thought, these guys look like they can give us some information. <laughs> These look like they know where they're going. Yeah. <laughs> so there They've we go. Got, got 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 the road. <laughs> Brilliant. We got back. We got back. Yeah. But yeah, that was probably one of the longest walks we, we, we've had. Yeah. Arguably. <laughs> the solid piece of information about that is obviously, if you're not familiar with London, which us northern monkeys aren't for the most part. Although I know Andy, you probably are a little bit more, uh, a bit more savvy at it, uh, the capital, because you were down there a fair bit, aren't you? Um, but I check have a, out the- a modern phone as well to check Google Maps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Google's cheating. Google is cheating. <laughs> just gotta go on. Just, just gotta go on. You where, where, wherever it takes you. Just wherever it takes you. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. It served us well. Uh, you say that. But to be fair, we're still here, and we've we've never, we've never. No, I won't say that. I would say we, we've never come across too much ill. But there's various various visits and trips resulted in injuries where possibly we have. So I possibly won't say that. Well, no, I, I did so when I, I first mentioned the idea of doing an NFL UK um, podcast. I did sort of mention that I did 
fractured two ribs, fractured my jaw, fractured my skull, and broke my cheekbone in three places. And I, I teased that. I, I don't know. I don't really remember too much about it. I've seen the pictures you guys kindly took of me getting up off the floor. Um, <laughs> LCCTV. <laughs> I've goofed it from time. That's going to turn up. That's going to turn up on you being framed or ridiculous. <laughs> I basically what happened was I fell down a flight. Was it Piccadilly or Leicester Square, wasn't it? Leicester Square, something like that, yeah. Yeah. Down a flight of stone stairs and landed face first. Zero survival instincts. Didn't get my hands out in front of me because they were no. still roughly no. near the rail. Which I to just be fair, it was, there were sort of two noises. So there was the noise when your face first hit the stair. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the second noise was when you hit the floor and like the wind went out you were like so, and that must be when you break your ribs as well which is mint <laughs> but it literally was like it was just like somebody toppling over and actually just not putting the hands out in front of them and just literally I don't know what I'll do my, my head will slow me down and just literally pick the board <laughs> top of a flight of stairs no. yeah I think it was partly my fault because um, I think I was sliding down the rail with my hands and then flicking my legs out and landing on my feet. Yeah, I had this went, I'll not do that. <laughs> I'll just jump. <laughs> well, he put his hands down. <laughs> then obviously being six foot five or whatever he is, it, and, and obviously possibly not necessarily understanding the balance between the amount of alcohol you've drunk and then momentum and physics and gravity and all that, just then decided that, ah, uh, Possibly, I'm a bit too big and heavy to do this. And then one of his hands slipped off, and where yeah. you go? <laughs> well, the well, thing is, I I took your word for it. You you literally, I remember you giving my face a prod and saying, "Nah, it's good. There's nothing broken." I thought, oh, his, his wife's a GP. He'll know, he'll know what he's on about." <laughs> Dude, I haven't got X-ray vision. I can't. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you, you didn't look like would he sloth off the Goonies or anything like that. You know what I mean? It wasn't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I did, but I looked like that before, so it didn't make any difference. <laughs> and then we proceeded then after that just to carry on and drink a bit more, didn't we? <laughs> well, went to the casino, there's no need for hospital because you you had already done your diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was the point. That was the point. So we went in the casino, did a bit of gambling and lost a bit. And then I thought, I'd better go and just check on Ad. And um, walked into like the lounge area and there's a nice sofa there and there's Ad, fully stretched out on this great, big, lovely sofa, just stuck over sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and just clock like, it must have been that weather, the casino manager's just about to walk over, and he's like, um, oh, you can't stay there. And I was like, oh, no, mate, it's fine, don't worry, he's with me, we were going to go now, sort of thing. And Adam's like, hey, oh, what, what, what's going on? <laughs> I can't believe they let me in. My hands are covered in blood. <laughs> blood <laughs> like, yeah, come in. You're exactly what we want in our casino. <laughs> and then, so so we, we started to head out. So that that was it. So we got to the bottom of the stairs. And we're like, "Where's Andy?" Because we could have walked to the bottom. And Andy, yeah. We're like, "Can't find Andy." He's like, "Where's he gone?" And then we said to the security guy, "Like, have you seen this big guy? So all oh, that big it's like a Viking. Kid. Looks a bit like a Viking. Have, have you seen him?" He's like, "No, he hasn't come past here." I'm like, seriously? So I was like, "Andy, you wait there." I ran back upstairs into the casino, looked around the casino, still couldn't see him. Come back down. I was like, "Are you sure he has me up?" No, no, no. Don't have him past here. And then must have been a couple of minutes later. Andy sort of arrives down the stairs. He goes, all right, boys. <laughs> I can't even remember what he said. When you say, oh, I've been looking for Ad or something, I can't even remember what he said. But it's like minutes later, just like this back of time. It wasn't even that big a casino, was it? No, no. Don't understand where he'd been. <laughs> there was a bit of a loop around, like, where that lounge area was and, and the tables. There was like a um, the, the payout booth toilets and like a little corridor. Right. But I think I went, I went cashed out went to the toilet and walked right around. Oh, okay, yeah. But so you probably like, came like, back in, went the other way. It was like a Benny Hill sketch. Just sort of like. <laughs> chasing each other around, not knowing where well, yeah. I wasn't running anywhere. <laughs> no. Well, I see you weren't running. The next day we proceeded to walk quite a long way on that Sunday. 
oh, it was ridiculous. We literally went walk from pub to pub in London. And it wasn't until we were in the last one where we went to watch the game, because like I say, we didn't get tickets. And I threw my backpack on my back. I realised my ribs are gone. My face had hurt so much. I didn't even know I'd done my ribs till then. I felt like yeah, I remember that, yeah. Out of place. Sitting, from place. So sitting on that stool, you sort of bent over or put all your backpack on, you're like, oh, my ribs. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, you were in. To be fair, you did look like you were in a bit of pain. Well, so, yeah, we had walked from like Leicester Square out to like London Bridge or Tower Bridge, and then oh, we walked miles back again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did. We, we we did. I mean, it was a typical sort of touristy bit when it was. We're going to look at the all the, the shard and all that, and sort of went and had a bit of a walk past and stuff. I don't know if we did that. It's just as walk left when we left the train station. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, yeah, we'll go that way. <laughs> An hour and twenty minutes later, we're like, oh, we're going the right way. <laughs> <laughs> just that, yeah. but that, that I, I mean it was that was a good weekend and it was nice just to get out on the beer but it was it was a shame not to be able to get to the game that time so I, next time we go I'd like to I mean I, that wasn't the reason we didn't go in 2019 I don't know if that was just because was it just because Jacob was born and probably the wife JJ, I think it's again. JJ I think yeah, yeah I think I, it's, yeah I think so yeah um and it's a shame it's a shame obviously with current climate and stuff we've got no chance have we got it and it's a shame because it is a bit of a focal point of the year and it's like, you, you know, you, you look forward to it, you've got your tickets, they arrive, you, you know you're going and you sort of, there is that anticipation of what the weekend is going to bring, whether it's, you know, fun and beer and a good laugh and, and just a great experience. And obviously you've got the game then on Sunday and it's just that build up to it that's, you do, it is one of the things that you that I look forward to. Oh, definitely. Definitely, you know yeah, I mean? me too. Me too. And just on the subject of beer, it was, I think it was our first trip down with Andy, and I've mentioned this on the Beans Does Beer podcast. We we discovered a beer in Balgo, uh, oh. which is uh, Belgium. <laughs> Obviously, I mentioned before Andy on, on the podcast, Andy used to live in Belgium, likes his Belgian beer, likes a bit of Belgian food, and you found this place called Balgo. Uh, I've told people uh, who listen to the podcast my opinion of the Duchess. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, um, we've had it since. It's not been as bad. No, it, was, um, it, it, it wasn't as bad, but it, it's, you still wouldn't say it was enjoyable. It's super power. But yeah. when, when the bartender says, oh, the, uh, it comes with a warning. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been the first clue. <laughs> but then that makes me want to try it, though. Yeah. It was the first time that, obviously, I hadn't tried it before. Andy was like, hey, try this. Like, What's it like? Oh, it's a bit sour and tasted it. Um, and I, I, I likened it to drinking sarsons. Um, <laughs> well, this is what this is at buying this one. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, he drank all the Mongozo banana. Uh, yeah, I, I went back and switched it from Mongozo banana. Which <laughs> to be fair, said, though, to be fair, the barman in the barman in Belgium, though, he did say he said actually, lads, you're not a fan of that, and we were like, no, yeah. mate, I'm doing that. And he went, oh, do you want to do you want to choose something else? So you know, that was fair play. Having, I, ironically. Um, what, what, one of my neighbours, um, we, we've been out with them a couple of times drinking, and um, we went into a local sort of craft place in in Alsager, um, and she ordered a Duchess, and I was like, seriously, do you actually like drinking that? She's like, yeah, I really like like sour. I was like, you need to speak to Andy because you guys are getting like a house off. <laughs> and she literally <laughs> drinking it. She's like, no, it's not too bad. I was like, oh, I've yeah. had one experience of it and I hated it. it <laughs> but she she loves it. But they go no, to, they've been over to Germany quite a few times and all over the place. We got it the last time as well, we went down. So you've had two experiences of it. And the second time we'd said, actually, deeply unpleasant, but not as bad as we remember. Mm, yeah, I don't think I'll be sampling it again, though, if I'm honest. Unless I'm so drunk that I can't actually remember sampling <laughs> it. But yeah, I, I didn't, didn't float my boat, put it like that. To be fair, a couple of the others he's tried. We, we, we did have one, I can't remember what it was. The food, by the way, in Belgo was outstanding. Yeah, next so level. The food was. Level. The, the food was was very very good, um, and I remember sitting down at the table, and Andy was sort of talking us through these beers, and and I said, oh, I'll try that one, and I said, oh, I'll have a pint, and Andy went, you won't. I was like, why not? And he went, well, they won't serve it yet. I was like, what do you mean? He went, oh, it comes in halves. I was like, why? He went, well, it's like twelve percent or something. I was like, what? <laughs> so I had this bit. I can't remember. I can't remember what it was, but it's like, I mean, it's beautiful. But it basically is like they won't serve it in pints. It's like you've just got to keep drinking half. Yeah, they should do it. It'd be like 15 quid a pint. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably, probably it is, yeah. Um, that but, yeah. That, that's one place you'd recommend one if people are going down. Would be, and the other place, 
was Flight Club, which we discovered last time. Yes, very, very good. Um, and we just stumbled, sort of stumbled across that, didn't we? It must, I mean, it was relatively early in the day. Um, possibly yeah. just... What, I think we went and found the hotel, didn't we? Yeah. My choosing of the hotel. And then we're like, oh, yeah. walk down here. Oh, well, we needed a drink before we went back in there. It was like around the corner, though, wasn't it? Like, not far from Oxford. Oh, it was, oh, was spot on. Well, no, we, so it was... We sort of said, well, why don't we go in here? Because, obviously, if you're fans of Adam's podcast, you'll you'll know he, he, he likes his darts. So we were like, well, we'll just go in here. Um, and we walked in and there was, there was a lady on the reception she, she was like oh do you want to book a, a, a sort of a table or are you just here for a drink lads I'm like, oh, just here for a drink right okay downstairs you go and it opened up into this like it was mint wasn't it it was like freestanding dartboards there, there was there was a decent food menu there was decent choice of beers and they gave us free food as well didn't they really yeah <laughs> they did and some what well and lots of lots of what was a beer was it it was quite a strong was it Beaver Town Lupuloid, if I remember uh, correctly. Yeah. No, I was no, I was I on Moretti. Was I on Moretti? I was on the Beaver Town. Yeah. Was, was I? Was, it might have been Moretti or something like that. I was Moretti, drinking. Yeah. Maybe and then. Or well, San Miguel. <laughs> San, yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> think it was San Miguel. <laughs> it, yeah, it is Moretti. I remember being on Lupuloid because it's it's quite a strong bit. Well, it's, it's like six percent or something like that. Yeah. Uh, six, uh, six, it explodes. You just send you crazy. That loop like. yeah. But then we should have said, oh, we'll, we'll just stop in here for one. And then sort of four or five pints later, we looked in it like half two in the afternoon. It's like, it's going to be a long day, boys. <laughs> I, didn't have any, I didn't have any dartboards uh, free so we could show off our Guinness World Record winning skills. But you did my <laughs> critique everybody else who was there, though, didn't you no, guys? To be fair. Yeah, you <laughs> Obviously, the more Moretti I have, the, the more vocal I was in 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 my um, in my criticism of their, uh, their, their their darting technique. Their work team out. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I'm surprised. I mean, I did stop short of actually going and saying, "Mate, you're just doing it all wrong. Just let me have a throw for you." Um, <laughs> oh God, we got James Wade sat behind us giving a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, no, that, no, that, but yeah, those, those two places. So you got flights club, I mean, and then Belgo. I definitely recommend Belgo if you if you haven't been to London and you're looking for a place that does like you know decent food, um, good, you know, good, good sort of range of beers. Definitely worth a visit. Do you know the one Pineapple Express as well? The what, Pineapple sorry? Express, that Pineapple Dance Studios. Is for that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, with yeah. Adam did try some various dance moves outside there, and we do have some incriminating <laughs> photos again. But oh dear, that's that might be why I injured myself actually. <laughs> <laughs> the groin muscle. The, <laughs> the other, the other place as well. I noted down. I might be one that you sent me actually, guys. Was Porky's because yeah. we we went there to check it out earlier in the day. <laughs> we then just ended up staying there on the beer for yeah. all afternoon. That was yeah. that was Halloween as well, wasn't it? So that Halloween, was yeah, uh, yeah. You were. So we went in, and was that was that Andy's sort of let's say Andy's was it his love of sort of plates of meat? Um, <laughs> so basically, if plate has meat, Andy's yeah. it's done, sold there, yeah. and he's got and vegetables. As long as you can take them off, it's fine. As what long as he's got <laughs> Was it a local beer? Was it or not, was it a, was it a, no? Was it a Czech beer or something that we were drinking? But again, it was one of those places that we just went in, and we're like, I oh, will just stay here for. For an hour or so, maybe have a bite, tweet for lunch, and go somewhere else. And we were there. We were there literally. Was it all night? We were there. Well, most of the night. We were there for we were like five or six went, hours, I think. Yeah, uh, went back, got changed, and went back again. Yeah, no, so we did, didn't we? Yeah, we went back in. But yeah, that, this all, it was Halloween. All the staff there was sort of dressed up and all the makeup and stuff. And that turned out to be quite a good night as well. I think you were critiquing the, uh, the hip pong as well. <laughs> I, I seem to remember you giving solid advice to the people playing beer, but no, you're doing it all wrong. <laughs> I'd start a new segment. It's like Gaz and his advice. Gaz and his sporting <laughs> advice. <laughs> no, Gaz and his unwelcome sporting advice. <laughs> <laughs> unwelcome and unwanted. <laughs> yeah. The other, the other, the other story that I thought was worth mentioning as well, because it doesn't involve me actually, and it's when we were out. Uh, and I forget which pub we were in, um, but I, I seem to remember I was annoying people by telling them about our Guinness World Record loads. Um, but 
There was a a little person there, wasn't there, Gaz? <laughs> uh, yeah, seemed to befriend him quite easily. Um, so we arrive at this, we arrive at this this pub, a quite a nice place again, and they had, um, I seem to remember they had like loads of sort of, sort of guest beers on and, and loads of craft beers on. Obviously, Andy was like, "Oh, this is mint. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that." So we spent spent a couple of hours there, and Adam quite rightly was mentioned. He was annoying people with his, I'm a genuine Guinness World Record holder, um, speech. And then, just out of nowhere, this like vertically challenged, like <laughs> he sort of started having a go and started having a bit of a dig, and it's like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> um, and for those people that know me, I'm a bit of a, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Um, but he was just like a little annoying wasp, and he was just like, just like buzzing around. I'm like, dude, what just, what are you doing? And then it ended up. I say push came to shove, but probably push came to a bit more than the shove, and ended up sort of. I think he tried to sort of take me down. Um, he said he could he could wrestle you to the ground. Yeah, that, yeah. He said, I bet I can wrestle you to the ground. I was like, I bet you can't. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, I, think, I mean, I I I only have hazy recollections of it. Um, probably due to the alcohol content throughout the day, but he sort of basically ran at me and tried to take me down, at which point I just bent my knees and leant on him, and then he couldn't move for about 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, it was just a weird, wasn't it? <laughs> it was just odd, but he got a couple of mates there, and they were laughing and joking and stuff, and it was like, dude, what are you doing? And then in the end, he just sort of basically gave up and goes, all right, and he just stood there, like, just not bothered. <laughs> yeah, we'll be going now. <laughs> and I think, actually, I think at that point, I think we sort of did say, yeah, we're probably best just to go now. Um, <laughs> and and left, but, yeah, really weird experience. So what did you do in London? Well, I, I, I wrestled a midget. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be fair, though, I mean, I mentioned there was a little person, but there, there was another incident that the three of us had with a little person. Well, this one was was looking for love. <laughs> Oh, Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> Do don't we? What was that? Don't remember which which story is this? Just it was near Leicester Square, wasn't it? Was... Yeah, just, we were having a beer just outside this place, Leicester Square, and this and he wasn't particularly. Oh, well, he was little one. He like say I'm six five, and he's six five. You're not exactly sure, and you look like James Wade. And this and these are these are the people. This again, vert, vertically challenged guy. <laughs> He came up to us. Do you not remember him? And he said, "I'm looking for love." <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. Don't remember. Hair, brother. <laughs> I don't remember. I genuinely don't. We sent him on it. We sent him on our way. It's like, can I just have a cuddle? Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> With him. <laughs> no, Do you not remember that? That was that was. That was um, I think that was, yeah, that was our first year. I don't remember again, that. Though, I, I was going to say, while, while we're on another story of ver- <laughs> so slightly, vertically, another story, yeah. slightly vertically challenged individuals, um, and he was a lovely guy, but obviously quite, was, quite short. Was, too, <laughs> was, was, was he, um, me and Adam managed to um, sort of attach ourselves to a jockey um, <laughs> who was just travelling home one day by himself on the on the uh, tube and me and Adam got chatting to him and we were like, well, we don't really know where we're going. And he was like, well, which stop are you at? Yeah, we were yeah. on the wrong train. We were on the wrong we were on train. one, yeah. And he's like, oh, you're on the wrong one. And anyway, again. So, and I had to wear trousers as well. That yeah, day, yeah. Story, so, <laughs> he, he started, because I, I, I sort of like the, those people, you know, I like my sort of horse racing and stuff. And I was trying to wrap my brain as to whether or not I recognised him, did, did a, well, and I kept saying to him, I don't recognise him. I don't think he's like a really famous sort of jockey as such, but so it's definitely not Frankie de Tour. It's definitely not him like this. And, it's like, so, and I was racking my brains. I couldn't, we couldn't remember sort of placing him. And we were like, oh, where are you going to? And he's like, oh, I'm just, just on the way home. He's like, well, we're well, welcome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what are we having for dinner? <laughs> And he went, no, lads. And he went, no, 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 we'll come. Why? What's going on? He, did he say something? Oh, his daughter's going to cook him some food. We we're like, yeah, we're ravenous. We, we don't mind. We'll share. It's not a problem. And basically, for the next 20 minutes, just followed this poor guy down the road. <laughs> just basically sort of half joking, half threatening him that we're actually going to gate crash his house and eat all his food, which was not very pleasant of us, I have to admit. But it was funny. <laughs> He'd take a picture because he recognised that we didn't know. You know, we were two idiots. We'd had too much to drink. Didn't oh. know. 
were going yeah. i'd sat down on a tu- on the tube with a, a, an open bottle of beer in my trouser pocket and literally look for all intents and purposes like i wet myself yeah. Gaz just had a beer confiscated by the transport police because they wouldn't let him on that's just why my open beer was in the back of my pocket yeah. Yeah. and this guy took pete on and said no i'll, I'll see you later i'll walk you to your hotel and we're like not interested brother we're coming home with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, which hotel you at? Not interested, pal. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that 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 was I can't remember where that was. I don't think that was the first year. Was that maybe year two, maybe something? It's quite early, I think. Yeah, I, I think can't remember. Was. Can't remember what year it was. Um, but yeah, that that was sort of harassing sort of jockeys was was another sort of infamous London story. One of the other things we always set out when we go down there is try and get our photo taken with a celebrity or a cheerleader, don't we? Yes, and happy to report that we've managed to fulfil both of those criteria. <laughs> um, not, not that, was it the same trip? Was it the same? Tri- oh no, one was. No. no. Uh, well, one year we, one year we had. I say in terms of celebrity, the first year Kevin Cade was. God, God rest his soul. Kevin Cadle was like about two yards away from him, but was conducting interviews. We couldn't really get to chat to him. And then it was the year they did the the um, fan rally on Regent Street. Yes, and we were just literally game. just coming off like is it um, Oxford Circus, whatever it was. And we were just at the bottom of Regent Street, and I think it was Adco. He goes, there's, 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 "There's the big man." And we were like, "Hey!" And we walked over, and I mean, fair play to him. He obviously must have been busy that day, but took time out, didn't he? And, and yeah. And, chat and and asked us where we were from asked us where we were from and then wasn't very complimentary about our answer (laughs) Um, but i mean lovely guy you know i mean obviously that would have been a very busy time for him if you think of neil reynolds now and you know and all of that and all he was doing with sky sports and stuff um but literally just to take time out and have it's probably only a, a one two minute conversation with us um but you know what you hear, like, you know, and and I think did he say to you, Ad? Because obviously you're you're a big guy. He's like, oh, do you play or something? You're like, no. And he's like, where are you from? He said, I used to coach a bit of basketball up there and stuff, didn't he? So right. his 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 uh, opinion of Cheshire was based on Warrington, so I think we could understand that. Yeah, when he moved away from, <laughs> from Cheshire, and and he said Cheshire was a piece of <laughs> and 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 expletive. But as I say, maybe he was basing that too too much on his views of Warrington. But it, lo- lovely, lovely, lovely guy. <laughs> Man, he was a top man. Incredibly um, smooth hands. Incredibly smooth. I, I don't remember that. I don't. As maybe somebody that that, that doesn't um, use use products, I, I perhaps wouldn't know. But so, um, <laughs> but yeah, he, he lovely, lovely man. Um, and obviously, you know, tra- tragic news when you when you know yeah, when, when he passed and stuff. Sad day, really, for all I say NFL UK fans in particular. Absolutely. And who was the other? The other fella that we saw that day got a photo. Well, I got a photo of Cecil Martin, didn't I? He was, he's one of the co-presenters. Um, so, yeah. so I was one of the co-presenters on Sky Sports. He was an ex, I think, ex-running back, was he? I don't, I can't remember what team he was. Um, and again, it's one of those that he, he just sort of walked past and I said to Ad, I said, there's Cecil there. And he was like, where? And he was like, there he is. And then I sort of, I say ran, I probably sort of hobbled sort of about 10, 15 yards down the road after him. And I said, see, so do you mind if I have a photo? And again, he was great. He's like, yo, put some arm around me. And, and he's there like, photos, where are you guys from? And again, really, you know, real, really top guy. He's obviously been sort of shepherded with a couple of other people because he, he'd obviously got sort of um, interview responsibilities and Sky Sports responsibilities. But real, you know, real genuine, nice guy and stuff. And he was just, I think you could tell he was dead pleased that it had taken off. Do you know what I mean? The whole sport taken off and everybody wanted photos. Everyone's having a good time and stuff. Um, and so that was it. So that was Kevin Cadle and then Cecil within, I say, what, an hour of each other. It was, it was brilliant. So so that was a tick, wasn't it? That was the name of the celebs. And then the year after, when we went with Sid, we got our picture with one of the Jags cheerleaders, didn't we? We did. Um, that was, was that it? She was, as, she was as pleased as we were. Yeah, she, she looked it from the photo. <laughs> we were all beaming away and there she is like, yeah, um, we so that's two bags. <laughs> that was Sydney's unshaven sort of um, period of time, wasn't it? Um, like a Russian hitman. <laughs> he did look like a Russian hitman. Um, but was that was that Wembley? Was that was that does that just after you disgraced yourself in the catching cake craze or whatever? <laughs> or who I disgraced myself? You you disgraced yourself. Oh, yeah. 
I'm 17 stone, six foot five, and I was wearing Doc Martens. I cannot run in what was basically a bouncy <laughs> castle. <laughs> yeah. I can't run anyway, let's be honest. <laughs> but I think that was that was where I think that was was that the first fan rally that was actually at Wembley and then they they'd come and done they they must have done like a dance thing, sort of cheerleading session. And then obviously they were being led out and we were like, Oh, do you mind having a photo? And 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 obviously these audios from douchebags like this. It was um, so that was so that was a, that was a cheerleader on it. So that was sort of the, the celebs and the, and the cheerleader. So we sort of ticked that. There was that. I, I'd have loved to have gone because one of the years we were there, Sean Gales. That remember when Sean Gales by pitch side did an interview, and I was like, dude, I'm gonna have to go. He's like, Chicago Bears is legend. He's like proper. And and I got halfway down this security guard. I was like, no, no. I was like, Can I, oh mate, I'm a Chicago Bears fan. Can I not go see him? Look at Sean Gale. No. And I was like, all right, so then I had to turn around and it was like, that was good. The fact he was live on Sky at the time might have influenced that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me in the background going, Sean, Sean. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the, I mean, you obviously see, we haven't seen Vernon Kay, which is somebody that we said we wanted to go and try and find, don't we? But he's always down yeah, there. there. Have we? Or uh, Jason Bell, not seeing those down there. No, no, not, see, not seeing those guys. Um, we have managed to get interviewed. Fit, fit. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm not so sure the interview went well and I think if they ever played it back I think I'd probably die of embarrassment but um... oh, I'm glad they did. because if you're going down and if you're not necessarily familiar with the team we, you know you bone up a little bit don't you on the name yeah. so just in case someone points a camera in your face and said yeah. who's going to be a game changer um, you want to know that you can say something sensible. Actually, one like, of the quarterbacks or the oh. defensive leader or whatever, something like that. And it was like, oh, you're at, you're at your brains. And then they asked you, did they, did they ask it was you? The, it was the Steelers game. So if there was one team I actually had a, a decent bit of knowledge of, it was that. But they, they put in a camera. Uh, I, I don't know how many but, uh, uh, cans of Peroni or whatever we've been drinking that day. And it's like, uh, yeah, Roethlisberger will make a real difference. <laughs> and then you just went, yeah, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then after Adam was after Adam was obviously um, let's just say not 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 great performance in front of the mic. They then shoved the mic in front of me and said, "So what are your thoughts?" And I went, "What he said." <laughs> Literally, <laughs> just like froze yeah. on the spot. It's like all this NFL knowledge is what he said. Um, so obviously, obviously, that probably never aired and never will air, um, and possibly will go down as the worst interview ever recorded in history. Um, which, which is Steve McLaren's interview when he when he's putting on the Dutch accent. Oh, it's got to, that can't be done. <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah, that, yeah. Maybe maybe not quite as good as as bad as that one, but um, but to be fair, for a couple of sort of douchebags that like a beer walking through London with NFL tops on, it's like happy days. That'll do for me. Well, I think we've covered off pretty much everything there that we want to talk about. Whether there's any solid advice to be taken from that, I don't know. Any of you guys want to add anything else? I think, I mean, I think advice is do your homework in terms of where you want to stay. I mean, obviously, do, you know, try try to sort of obviously demand not only for tickets, but demand for hotel rooms and stuff will go up on that weekend. So, you know, try and get it in early. Um, one piece of advice I would say is that if you are looking at something like a Premier Inn or Holiday Inn, they obviously do... Uh, sort of you can cancel up to one o'clock on the day so what I've done previously is I've booked sort of three or four different places and then we sort of decide which one we want to go to and then you just cancel the others and as, if you're on like, the flex this one, then we'll stay there <laughs> yeah pick, pick, pick the one that Andy chooses and then we'll go there um, so that's the one thing just check out your accommodation first um, make sure that you know pretty much I mean in terms of safety make sure you know pretty much how to get back and the route you're going to take and stuff and other than that just go and have a good time that's it. That'd be, That's that'd it. Be amazing. He's going to have a good time. And be prepared to spend a bit of money. Because one of the other things we did on one of our trips there, we took in a Premier League game as well, didn't we? That yeah. worked out expensive that, that weekend, yeah. didn't it? Could have yeah. all the I mean, a brother, which you... <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't quite tell you how the um, how the conversation went in terms of me finding out that actually we were going to go to the Premier League game. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, let's just say it arrived um, via a phone message and I, I let's just say I, I was I was on the toilet when the phone message arrived um, <laughs> at which point Adam says oh there's an Arsenal game on it's like oh we're going it's like oh are we oh okay sound because we, we sort of look for 
whether or not we could ma- marry up a sort of Premier League game. But what happened was the Premier League game was obviously on the Sunday, wasn't it? And the game that we were going to go to, the NFL game, didn't start till six on the Sunday evening that year. Kick off. Um, and I think was the or was it a half six or something? Then the, the Arsenal game was a four o'clock kickoff or something like that. But there was a basic we we had maybe half an hour, forty minutes to get from one to the other sort of thing. Can't remember the exact. Maybe it started at seven. The NFL game, something like that. Um, but yeah, so we took in the one piece of information we didn't have is that the tube station opposite the Emirates oh, yeah. closes after the game because yeah. it, the staircase go down. They don't want sort of thousands of people running down a staircase. So we ended up having to sprint across London to try and get to the nearest. And keeping in mind, our, our sense of direction is not the best, is it? Yeah, not great. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we got that. I think we got there. Our sort of pre-game show was sort of over, and I think we took our seats, and it must have been about five minutes to kick off something, which some people say is great timing, but we quite like to get there a little bit early, sample the atmosphere and you know, perhaps have a couple of beers and stuff, don't we? But, um, but yeah, that, was, that turned out to be quite an expensive weekend, that did. Um, <laughs> You've got your NFL game, you've got your Premier League game, and then you transport your beer and your food and stuff. It was, but you know what? You look forward to it. It's a highlight of the year and stuff in terms of trips away with the lads. So, it wouldn't change it for the world. Absolutely. So, until next year, when no doubt we'll do an episode uh, of the Beans to Stuff podcast from London, we'll say farewell for this week. Cheers, guys. See you, See you guys. See you. Have a good one. Cheers. See you.